Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar today. We are so excited for this one because not only is it a hot topic right now, but we also have a very special guest with us. So very exciting. And we cannot wait to talk all about AI and um, how you can create content with it and all the fun things you can do with it. So we do have a lot to get over today, so I'm going to hop right into it. But as we go through our intros and whatnot, let us know where you're joining from in the chat, because I always love to see where everyone is coming from. Love it. But if this is your first webinar with us, we'll do a quick round of intros. So my name is Alyssa, and I'm a community manager here at Heyorka. So I do our webinars, our newsletter, um, Facebook group, all that good stuff. And I will pass it over to Ketia. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, my name is Ketsia, and I'm the social media community manager here at Hey Orca. So whenever you post online and you tag us and we're having little DM conversations, it's me. Um, and yeah, and also do some creator stuff as well. And I'm calling from Montreal here in Canada, <laughs> passing it over to Zach, our guest. Hello, everyone. Um, I am the guest, also known as uh, Zach. Um, I'm the manager of content production at Ignite Social Media. Um, and like you'll hear about in a couple minutes, I'm also part of like a greater kind of like initiative task force group that we have um, that is uh, able to kind of present the findings I'll be talking about today with AI and creativity and stuff. So happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. We are very excited. Um, and if this is your first webinar with us, we love to do giveaways. So there's actually two ways you can win for this giveaway. So the first one is head over to our Instagram account. We have a poll going on our story right now. It's this question on the screen. Do you currently use AI for content creation? Head over to that poll, vote on it, and we will be randomly selecting someone who voted on that poll at the very end, and you will win some points for our merch store. And then the second way to win, this is for all of the Heyorka customers out there. Let me know in the chat, out of um, the AI features that we have in Heyorka, which one do you use the most? So let me know in the chat, and then we will be grabbing one of our customers who answered the question at the very end to also win more Heyorka merch store points. So two ways to win. So definitely stay to the very end to see if you're one of those lucky winners. Oh, AI, a lot of love for AI captions. Love it. Awesome. So speaking of that, before I pass it over to Zach, I do want to show you a few of the Heyorka um, AI features. So I'm going to share my screen really quick. I love all the responses. So as the popular response was, it was AI captions. Let me know if you can hear me still <laughs> also, because I my screen just did something weird. So let me know in the chat if you can hear me. You can? OK. Oh, Ketsy, I don't know what's happening on your That was so video. dramatic. <laughs> Some fireworks. Love it. OK, good. You can hear me. I'm paranoid from last week when my camera and mic just dropped. So I'm going to just keep asking throughout the whole thing. OK, so we're going to start with AI captions, which is the one that I'm seeing most talked about in the chat. So here's our calendar here. I have a post pre-made up here. So this is um, a post from International Women's Day. So let's just pretend. I'm having writer's block. I do not know what to write right now. So I am going to go to AI captions. And then I can write a little bit about what this post is about. So Instagram posts about International Women's Day. Uh, I'm going to keep it super simple just so I don't take up too much time. But you can add much more detail there. So it can be a more detailed caption. The keyword here, I'm going to say International Women's Day. And then my favorite part here is the tones, because 
you know, every brand has different tones. Like some are super friendly, maybe some are a little bit more witty. So this way you can choose the tone that you want. So I'm going to go excited. And it's going to generate some content or caption ideas for me. Um, so you can regenerate if you don't like the ones that's showing. Um, but you can add to post the one that you like best. And then, of course, you can tweak it to be a little bit more specific to what you want. So I find that really helps when you have writer's block. Because sometimes, especially if you're at an agency, maybe you're doing a bunch of different brands, it's can it can be hard to get um, the brain going with captions. So that one is really awesome. The next one I'll show is our AI um, response suggestions. So I can see it now. So I see some posts from Jessie. Shout out Jessie. She is here. I am going to respond to Jessie's um, latest LinkedIn post. And you should check it out if you haven't. But if I go to reply, it will now say AI reply suggestion. So now it actually gives me a few awesome suggestions to reply back to Jesse. I really like this for when you get those, maybe there's a spam comment or maybe a negative comment that you don't really know how to approach. This can really help with that. And then the last one I will show is AI alt text. This is our most recent one. And this one is a huge lifesaver. Um, I find sometimes it can be tricky to write alt text. Um, so I like to use this one just to get my, my brain going. We actually did a webinar on alt text um, a couple of weeks ago and went over all the ins and outs. Of course, as I'm sharing my screen, it decides to freeze. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, it's taking a little too long because I feel like it knows that I am trying to screen share. But pretty much when you have an image in the media library, you can select those little three dots and then you can add alt text and it will give you some suggestions. Oh, perfect. Now it's here. I'll show you really quick. So those three dots go add alt text and it will just automatically give you suggestions. So it will generate some here. Um, you can select the one that you want. And then of course, add your own details. Sometimes you need to add more specific things to your brand, but this makes it so much easier. So I'll stop sharing there. Awesome. So I saw a lot of love for those features when I asked the question earlier. So if some of you are Heyorka users and haven't tried those yet, definitely suggest giving them a try. Lyle, I'll use it for blog images the best. All right. So I am now going to pass it over to Zach, who has so much good content to go over right now. And I'm so excited. So I will pass it over to you. Cool. Thanks, Alyssa. So um, I guess one thing noted when it comes to just general presentations, uh, I'm not one of those like super, super structured people. So this will be insanely casual. Um, I think like when questions are basically asked, they'll kind of be answered as is. I'm not going to, you know, make you sit through this and, and wait to ask at the very end. This is super casual. This is just more of like what we found at Ignite and all that good stuff and definitely want to want to share with you guys. So first up is kind of a more important one. You know, is this going to take our jobs? We've seen a specific type of blue checkmark people only on uh, Twitter talk about how AI is going to be a full-time graphic designer and they don't really know what they're talking about and it's always funny to watch them. Uh, so here's your answer. No, that's it. This is it. This presentation is done. We've wrapped up. That's all you got to know. AI is not going to take our jobs. The more you know, congrats, everybody. We've done it. But in all seriousness, we can kind of jump into this. Uh, this, as far as, you know, not just myself, like I'm, I'm mainly speaking about a company here and not really, you know, my findings, but... Uh, at Ignite, we decided to have kind of a, an agency initiative and really take a deep dive. That's the simplest way of putting it into all things AI. Um, it was everything from asset management, content creation, copywriting, uh, customer service responses, uh, data analytics, really everything. Um, so 
we kind of had this idea and got a team of about eight, nine people together and, and kind of wondered like how much of this is actively going to help us or how much of it is going to hinder and, and waste our time on it. And so we dove in uh, basically throughout the entire year and we're still doing it. Uh, but it all kind of just started with um, one of our employees kind of having this, you know, you've all wondered why you've been here kind of moment. And we got together, brainstormed and started reviewing a lot of things and, saw what could, you know, kind of hit the chopping block immediately or saw what had potential and continued to use it as well as, you know, that AI itself, kind of like I think Mid Journey is a good one that we use and I'll talk a lot about it here. Um, we kind of see its potential where how it started at the beginning of, of last year and, and how it ended now, um, it's starting to hinder us less and really help us um, make a lot of different types of content for different types of clients. Um, I'll go ahead and kind of say full transparency. A lot of the client work I can't really show in here. Uh, there's maybe like one or two examples I can show because you can physically like go find them on the client's page. So there's really nothing to hide there. Uh, but this was just our rough kind of timeline of what we did. And um, towards the end of last year, it was, it was really cool because we all kind of had this idea of like, you know, we need to publish this. Like we need to show people kind of what, what we found and, and really, you know, stop the whole fear mongering of, you know, you hear it everywhere. Just like AI is going to take this. And, you know, what's the point of being a video editor when AI text to video exists? Or what's the point of being a graphic designer when like AI can do it, when like it still needs that human touch that we have as like creative individuals specifically. So some uh, examples that we kind of had with this, um, one of our first ones and earlier ones uh, was through Mid Journey. Uh, we wanted to see kind of, you know, here's that same thing. Like, is it going to hinder our workflow or is it going to make it better? And at first, you know, through mid journey, it was like what was being presented and created was awesome and it was great. But the client that we used is, is a real place in a real location. So clearly they're going to know that it's not there or that something is wrong. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those, it's a, it's an East coast place. It's the outer banks. Um, if you say, you know, sunrise and it shows the ocean, they'll agree with you. But if you say sunset and ocean, in the same sentence, they know that you're, you know, you're lying about it because the sun doesn't, doesn't sit on the East coast. It sets on the shore side or town side. So we basically had an idea where we took, as you can see the photo on the left, it's an actual iconic location from the outer banks, um, the actual outer banks, not the TV show. There's a lot of differences. We can talk about that some other time. Um, and basically created a post uh, with an AI generated image next to it and just said, like, we asked AI, you know, to create uh, one of the more iconic landmarks of it. And we kind of had a play on words and said, you know, like, we used AI to, you know, see what it like, what it thinks the Outer Banks is or the natural beauty of it. So using AI kind of like really helps us in this situation. We wanted, uh, we wanted this post to get a lot of engagements and, and a lot of people really liked it. They thought it was, you know, kind of funny how the windows were a little messed up, but the general idea of like the striped pattern and all of that was there. And so, excuse me, it wound up being a lot of fun. And another thing that we did with this too was have a lot of keywords, which really does help the workflow in general as well. And I think like in mid journey, we said like photo, you know, photo of this lighthouse, um, mimicking a specific camera model, a specific lens, time of day, the way it was shot, the weather, like just all of that. And wound up having like a, a really cool result. And kind of like I just said, it, it had a lot of engagement and it was a lot of fun to do. That is so cool. I feel like when it comes to AI, I always think like text-based AI, like captions, ideas, stuff like that. But seeing all of the cool stuff that you have here with images, I feel like I'm missing out <laughs> on like the different AI tools that can like enhance images and stuff like that. Same. I've never tried image AI before, um, but every time someone shows it, I'm like, oh, true, you can do that. But I always only stick to text for some reason. Yeah. Same. We got to branch the, out. <laughs> yeah, the, the best part too is that like everyone on um, our agency initiative team had a, like had a try in this. Like, so it wasn't just the creative team being creative. Uh, it was people who just kind of learned the tool and got better through repetition and telling you know the artificial intelligence kind of its brain, if you will, what we wanted and fine tuned it. Um, and so we uh, decided. And another one to kind of uh, combine two images because you can do that with mid journey as well and we're like well what if we take like two of these actual images and, and tell it you know make an ai generated one but slightly change it up 
And uh, as you can see in that kind of second part, you, you see wrong kind of there, you know, big, but uh, we did a spot the difference and, and most people got it, you know, correct. And I'll show you it on the next slide. Uh, but a lot of people also kind of got it wrong and had to even said like, oh, I had to go back and like see the comments of like where it was wrong. So there's your little freaky moment, but the longer it is one of those images where like the longer you look at it, the more like questionable things start to pop up. Um, I'll go to the next slide. Uh, basically, the, the first two photos are actual photos that we took on lo like on location, blended it, fine tuned it a little bit. Um, I think I even sit on this one to like color correct it by adding saturation and, and stuff like that. And that's, you know, the third image is obviously the, the fake one. If you kind of, you know, just glance at it and then look away and look back, it, it might look convincingly real to you. But I mean, obviously, the longer you start to look at it, there's things that like kind of don't make sense or, you know, kind of like why are there just random, random, you know, tracks of feet that are on the left or right side and they just kind of stop out of nowhere. Or why does that guy look like a little kind of stiff and if you zoom in there's like a weird like white outline around it almost like we're holding up like a cardboard character um but stuff like this was a lot of fun like you can the fact that you can kind of combine two images that are very similar and then fine tune it uh can be a lot of fun when kind of creating content as well and we do this a, a lot at work but we mainly do it uh, to kind of create like abstract backgrounds to kind of help with like our our, our content creation process we'll make you know like a certain background but then put maybe like some text over this or another photo um i think i have an example of, of something that we do uh, pretty similar later on but uh just some really cool stuff that we're able to do and it maybe takes 10 15 minutes uh if you don't know what you're doing that's the best part by the end of the year everyone kind of had these whole processes like figured out and it took less than 10 minutes from like start to finish to get what we wanted so through that repetition and just the AI learning, it, it became easier for us. Uh, another good one, um, I have a coworker, I'm pretty sure he's here right now. Uh, I don't have access to the chat or anything like that, but uh, generative fill is a really big one. Uh, we definitely use it a lot. Uh, pretty sure a lot of people could find it helpful, uh, especially when you're working with clients and they want a one by one photo to be posted, or maybe it is a one by one photo posted and it has to go uh, on Instagram and you want it four by five, or maybe you have, you know, a one by one and you want to make it a 16 by nine or a nine by 16, or maybe you have a photo, but you only want a certain part of it. You can crop that part and then generative fill to kind of what else you want. These are all examples that we've done for clients. Uh, that clients allow us to do. I'll, I'll be very clear on that. Like we are allowed to do this. Um, but generative fill has been something with Adobe that started out a little whack. And then in the last, I think like five months, it's just become like this insanely powerful tool. Uh, it is image manipulation at the end of the day, but it does a really good job of, of really like expanding and, and kind of like giving, you know, like a broader canvas on our creative, which really helps us. Um, we're starting as of right now to kind of dive in to some other AI stuff that actually takes the image and expands the image uh, to be a higher resolution while keeping it as is, because I'm pretty sure a lot of us in, in the social space have gotten technically, you know, the one by one photo, but maybe its resolutions are like 300 by 300 and like you just you just can't do that. And so that program can expand it to at least your, you know, 720 by 720 and maybe even the 1080 1080 aspect ratio. and that'll help do that. But kind of for more creative reasons, kind of like you see here, uh, you know, we're, we're in North Carolina, so we're, we're in the land of the pines. And the fact that, you know, the first image is how it was taken. The second image is generative fill. I mean, it, it nailed it. That's almost it's not my backyard. I wish it was, but definitely have kind of trees <laughs> like that kind of around this area. So uh, when it works, man, it, it's awesome. It works super well. Yeah, this is probably my favorite one. I feel like this can come in handy so much i think it's so cool and there's a few comments in the chat that are that are great lyle says um this is the thing that makes me think okay ai is not that scary which we love right. to hear I'm trying we to see I, I can say we we felt that way too i think once we saw how it really would help the creative process while still requiring like somebody to put in that creative thing we kind of let our guards down and we're like okay like this isn't like some you know, prologue to like a new Terminator in real life series kind of thing. Uh, like this is something that is just making the workflow easier. 
you know, it's, it's eliminating that awkward, like external email of like, you know, can we have a better photo? Like, do you have a better photo or the, you know, the repetitions of like, please send a higher resolution and like those kinds of stuff. Like you can really kind of take it into your own hands and really kind of like eliminate that kind of weird, like null area, especially if you are working with a, with an external client on your brand. Yeah. I also like as a social media manager, I've ran into moments where clients don't have photos or like very outdated photos of their brand. And it's not very like it doesn't really match, you know, the feed or the vibe they're trying to give. And they're just like, hey, this is this product photo of our, you know, European branch, but you need to Photoshop it into you know, the North American branch and you're like, um, I only have Canva. <laughs> like, I don't know how I'm supposed to mock it up into a bathroom or something. And I feel like now there's so many options to change the background and be able to create maybe better Photoshopped uh, pictures. So that's really cool to see. Mm -hmm. And now everyone has access to generative fill because it was for so long just set behind um the super buggy, well, I mean, all Adobe products are that way, but like super, super buggy uh, Photoshop beta, but now it's just, it's right there in Photoshop. I think whenever you either do like the selection tool or crop something, it pops up as a little toolbar right there. So it's great. And um, just the usability is super, super easy. Um, so this was actually blatantly stolen from our ebook um, instead of just finding everything, I'll put like a little plug in here and I'll have another plug, you know, at the, at the end of it. Um, but a lot of like other examples that we also used, uh, as you can see, like that prompt example that I was talking about earlier with the lighthouse, this is kind of it right here. Um, you know, this is, this is the process. We tell it the type of, the type of photo we want, you know, how we want it. Like we want it to be a wide shot. Maybe we don't want a telephoto lens or a prime lens or like a 50 millimeter. Um, Cause the crazy part is that, there were a few times when I even said like photo of this with a 75 millimeter prime lens, you know, shallow depth of field at roughly 2.8 aperture. And, and it would do that, which that's is if you're into like photography or videography, like you could go just bananas with this kinds of creation and, and really like tell it to take the photo you want to take. Um, but this was kind of how we tried it. And then we wanted to get super finicky and, and bring back, you know, the good old iPhone eight, back when we still had buttons. And uh, it's funny because the first result is physically like, well, here's your iPhone <laughs> um, or I guess iPhone-esque type phone, what AI thinks the iPhone is. Whereas like the other two kind of look like they're taken on one of those earlier model kind of lower megapixel camera phones before they've like turned into like the insane things that they are today, which also like those new phones are powered by AI. That's why if you ever take a photo and then especially on iPhone, if you take a photo and then immediately open up your photos app, you can actually see it kind of like live, like enhance your photo, which to me, I guess that's where I find it creepy. Uh, as someone who did like photography for a few years before coming onto the agency side, I'm like, no, like I want to edit my photo, but it helps a lot, especially low lights that we take. But these were the three like really popular and kind of like the three core uh, image generation AI tools that we decided to use. And I think the best part was that each one of them kind of gave you like your own unique style. And so, you know, we weren't just tied to one specific one and it was like, well, if we can't create it, we can't create it. You know, we had stable diffusion, Dolly and then mid journey. And it was like, okay, cool. Like which one's the better one? Let's go let's stick with that program and get to like the final result that we want to get to uh, and then be able to kind of post it for creative. So lots of tools that we were able to kind of dive into and, and really have a lot of fun with. I am learning now that it's just, I, I know with like text prompts, it's good to be specific, but I love how specific you are for the photo ones. Like I would never think to say shot on iPhone 8 in 2017, but like mm -hmm. that's perfect. So yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, I think the um, the Lighthouse one, I think we said like a Canon 5D Mark IV or something like that. Like we wanted something like super, super specific. And we, I think we tested, we said like Sony A7, Canon 5D, um, like the Nikon D5700, like all those other kinds. And, and they were all like varyingly different. So it was really wild to know that like through AI learning, it's kind of learned like the color science of each brand. And so it was, it was a lot of fun to kind of see that pop up. And I just saw we have one question here. Um, 
Thoughts on copyright issues with generative AI pictures? Oh yeah, lot. As uh, not only personally, but like as a team, we definitely had a lot. Uh, we always kind of wondered like, what what is the line? Like, when is it? Like, when is it? You know, copyright infringement. Um, I never printed it out, but I have it like on my computer. But I used Mid Journey and and basically said like, create you know like a, a Godzilla movie poster in the style of like a Wes Anderson film, and it came out in that kind of like vibrant style. You know, the text and all of that was messed up because it was still during that time when like AI couldn't really do text that well when you would tell it to spell something. Um, but that's that's kind of been like a big talking point for us too. Like you know, it, it kind of it, it's like answering that question with another question of how far is too far. Um, and I guess like you do really have to be careful. And I know there's been some court cases about it as well. Uh, but one thing, especially when we were publishing, you know, creative to clients, uh, we definitely, you know, we never said like this image in this person's style. Uh, we wanted to kind of stay away from that just in case, you know, you just get that odd, odd, you know, situation. And then before you know it, you've got a lawsuit and things just get messy and then it's not fun. Um, but it, it is a good question because like you can definitely, it's been shown, like you can definitely like rip off like Van Gogh's paintings. Like you can say, you know, I want, you know, like right now I can say like, I want a picture of, you know, Raleigh, North Carolina in at sunset painted like a Van Gogh photo and it'll do that. And then that's kind of when, you know, like that ethics, a little bit of morality and then copyright kind of comes into play. Um, it's still a gray area, which is really crazy, but I'm, I'm wondering like with just how much better, you know, specifically image generation is getting, uh, if things are gonna, you know, gonna have to be, excuse me, things are gonna have to be like limited to all of that. So it's a good question. Um, excuse me, another, another example that we used, uh, and we definitely do talk about it in our ebook. There's the second plug. I'll be sure to, you know, put in like five more by the end of this. Um, we noticed though, like anytime we said like a person or a human uh, or a man or a woman, it nine times out of 10 was just a white person. It was, you know, like a, it was, I think I jokingly said like it was like generic white dude four or something like that. You know, if you've played like The Sims or any kind of character creation video game. And so we definitely kind of dug into this a lot too and really wanted to find out like what kind of keywords do we need to put in there to change it and like actually show, you know, just some diversity in it. Because uh, our initial test when we had, you know, people, loosely people uh, in our subjects, like they were just like they were white men or they resembled white men. Uh, and then we kind of dove deep in there and started having you know more like buzzwords keywords i have the prompt of this one in there and you know we at first did just say a young college student studying while enjoying sliced apples and they gave us four images all the white guy um uh, there's even been times when we've said like give us a young you know career driven professional woman and it still gives us a white guy and it's and so it's getting it's getting better now uh, but we have noticed that like especially when it comes to kind of like wanting that style of like photography through AI, you really have to be specific in like what you want because it, it's just, it, it just goes to like a generic white person, which was weird. But then like with some of our clients who we were able to like these images show, we were able to kind of like really kind of tell it like what we wanted to do, how we wanted to do it. And I think after a few months, especially with mid journeys up like updating and, and learning, uh, we wound up kind of getting the results that we wanted. So in a really creepy way, with AI, you can kind of literally make whoever you want to make. And then uh, I touched on it earlier when I said we like to use it for kind of backgrounds or abstract backgrounds or fill. Uh, these were ideas for a client um, where we wanted to kind of have a corkboard background and then be able to put stuff on that corkboard through either Canva or Photoshop. Um, and we were able to do that with a few of them. Uh, I don't think we use these exact images because we wanted a more like whiteboard focused and not so much like the whiteboard kind of like tucked away. Once again, that kind of comes to keywording, but this is one of the stronger like cases uh, that we had that, you know, kind of really showed everybody at our job. Like, you know, this, this stuff is going to be like, it's such a great tool instead of having to maybe set up and spend an hour or so out of your, out of your workload, out of your work day to set up a set, 
take the correct photo, make sure the photo is correct, you know, and then throw all of that in. We can literally just as someone's working on their stuff in Adobe Suite, open up another tab on their computer or with like, you know, mid journey, open up your discord because that's what it runs out of. And just basically say, this is the kind of background I want. There it is. You know, you can download it in an insanely high resolution, throw it into your Canva file, throw it into your Photoshop file. Uh, some of it has been used in After Effects and then create your animations, or your graphics, anything like that. So these are the really big features that we use. And I think kind of like that statement earlier from somebody who said that like, you're, you're making this less scary. Like this was kind of the tool for me personally where I was like, okay, like this is gonna save a lot of time. This is going to save, you know, like I said, a, a lot of time, not only like just with general working, but like set building and then prop running and just all of that stuff. Like we can just do it on the computer that we're already working on. So this alone has kind of been like the money maker in a sense. And I've had a lot of fun with this one. And we do have one question here from Taylor. Um, they say, what are the top instances that you would recommend using this for that work best for clients? Yeah. Um, man, top instances. I think we did like a checklist. So we wanted to, it was like a checklist for um, like a college student. And so we wanted to kind of create like a background of like a dorm that had, you know, the court board. And then we would put kind of our stuff on that. Um, there's been instances where I've used it uh, to make, because I just find trouble with it in Photoshop, uh, specifically colored gradient backgrounds. Uh, I'll have it do that for me and create a bunch of different options and throw all of those into a Photoshop document and see which one works best. Um, there's been a few times when we've had others who kind of created, who have created um, like images of like recipes of things and have used that in some of their client work. Um, it's, it's really just, it's, there's so many like instances, like I could go on forever and definitely ruin a lot of like client information that I can't do. Uh, but there's so many that you can do. And like I said, like it, it goes back to where like, it's not really hindering, like it's enhancing like for a tool. So like I said, you know, I, I, I feel bad that I'm repeating myself, but uh, it, you know, you can save time by not having to build prop hunt, all of that. And then if you know, you know, basic Canva, basic Photoshop, like you're able to kind of put in a few image assets and text spaces that you need to really like kind of make as much as I hate to say it, like make your graphic pop. I know all of us creatives love that sentence so much. And then uh, we did a little bit of other, other tests, um, really just for the sake of time, I, I put in another example. Uh, it's something that definitely is, uh, it comes in handy, especially with our, our reactive community managers with some of our clients. And I'll show you after I take a quick drink because I'm not used to talking so much. But a good example is that we had a client that had a lot of reactive. Um, tons of messaging, tons of like comment responses, private messages, uh, things of that sort. And so uh, the community managers that were on our agency initiative team really dove into uh, WordTune. They dove into a ton of other ones, but I think WordTune was the one that kind of stuck out most. Um, and they basically used it to help create responses and create responses in like a timely manner to a client that has a high engagement rate on their posts because it's people who are asking questions, uh, whether they're good or bad, or, you know, asking or responding in a positive manner, a neutral manner, or a negative, excuse me, a, ne a negative manner. Uh, these little screenshots are just examples of, of what they did with the client. Um, so instead of just, you know, having, you know, I'm not going to label certain accounts, but certain accounts, when you respond to something, whether it's positive or negative online, you kind of get that like really generic response and you're like, okay, like clearly this is just copy and paste from a document. And that's, that's not throwing shade at everybody. Like sometimes that's just what you have to do. And that's just kind of like the nature of the beast. Uh, but we wanted to see if there was a way where we could kind of refrain from doing that and kind of make the responses sound more human. Um, even though they are technically being, you know, copied from a human, uh, the amount of responses would just be easier to kind of use this program. And then I think Alyssa, you've got you it, but we we'll have, have a quick, yes. have a quick little video that shows how it works here. There we go. I'll press play here. But I'll kind of talk over, uh, but basically, you know, they have all of these, 
all of these issues, all of these things, and you're able just to kind of go find newer suggestions, see all of these, and then really like kind of go through and just kind of, you know, what kind of what we did with uh, some of the AI stuff that Heyorga does, you're able to have that response, but it's not the end all be all response. Uh, you can obviously kind of fine tune what you want to say, do all that kind of stuff. And it really kind of helped the response rate and it just kind of made, you know, the responses a little bit more tailored to everyone instead of just being like, I'm sorry because of this or like, oh, that's not good. You, you got like kind of a more human response when the responses really weren't human to begin with, which I guess that's a little creepy, but it's also um, a little fun and it definitely streamlined our CM side of things. And then because I already mentioned it, it is a little plug. We do have an ebook. Uh, I think I did give Alyssa the link for it for y'all to go check it out. It's really all of our findings. Um, the creative stuff pretty much kind of came from that. Uh, but there is plenty more stuff to really dive in. Um, it's not just image generation. It's how did it help with our analytical findings? How did it help you know, with the CM reactive stuff? How did it help with creative? How did it help when it, you know, help us plan our day or try to plan our day? Um, just lots of things. There's a, there's a ton of information in there and it was honestly a lot of fun to put together. I honestly didn't know that this was kind of going to be the accumulation of our like agency initiative. Um, also thought that that was going to be the end of it and it wanted being just kind of a start. So at Ignite, we're definitely kind of like jumping way more into that and Hopefully we'll have some more kind of updates soon as it as it uh, as the year kind of progresses and as does AI. And then lastly, because it wouldn't be any fun hyping this thing up saying it's perfect, it's not. Uh, we've had plenty of, of problems, plenty of you know what the heck am I looking at, and plenty of just laughing. Um, I kept it out, but I know at the beginning of the year we wanted to try to implement those like AI headshot you know fads that like everybody was doing. And so I literally had to stick my neck and face out there and I presented it to our agency, uh, but I'm not presenting it here because I don't like how AI thinks I, I look. I got everything from weird astronaut to Florida man to just about everything. Uh, but the first one, we asked AI to basically kind of redress and put makeup on uh, and sunglasses and it, it's not the best. Um, the vertical image on the farther side, there was a subject there. I went to replace it with generative fill, and I said to give me um, a professional football player, but this looks like a child, I'm, I'm guessing, uh, and the little bit's kind of messed up with that. The bottom left was a video, which uh, I completely forgot to send at the last second, but the screenshot is good enough. Uh, because if you can read the uh, the text down there, it literally says sunset footage, you know, of this lighthouse at the Outer Banks of North Carolina. That to me looks like an AI generated area of Monaco. Uh, if you're into motorsport or any of that, that's kind of what that looks like. So it's definitely not perfect by any means. We still have a lot of work to do, um, but you know, with the bigger questions of will it take our jobs and will it hinder our workflow? Both of those answers are no. You're always going to need that creative input. Uh, you're always going to need multiple people to check through it to make sure it, it kind of has, you know, it passes that ethics check, passes that copyright check. That's a, that's a bigger kind of like buzzword that's coming out now. And really just kind of like making sure that, you know, you're able to kind of do what you need to do. And if it's wasting, you know, time, then it's something that you just kind of have to put aside and, and, and figure it out. And so that's a lot of the findings that we kind of learned through our agency initiative. And like I said, happy to share it with y'all and gladly was able to take any more questions if y'all have any. Awesome, thank you so much. I feel like I learned so much through this presentation and I think everyone did as well. And we did share the ebook in the chat and I saw a few, I think, I think it was Jen said she already downloaded it. So yeah. that is awesome. A lot of people are checking it out. I have actually taken a peek at it and it is very good. It has so much information in it. So highly recommend checking it out. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. I think we covered all the questions here. Um, but before we, we hop off, I can pick our winners. And also I do want to mention 
we do have a blog post up as well that has AI prompts. Lyle just put it in the chat. So if you're trying to do some captions but aren't quite sure where to start with prompts, you can check out that resource as well. I find it super helpful. Um, and then Casey says, does Zach have a LinkedIn? He does. And I think we have the link for it. So we'll put it in the chat for you. Um, and then, yeah, I'll pick our winners now. So our Instagram winner is Mary Bidwell. So Mary, let me know if you are here right now. I think you are. I think I saw your name. And our Hey Orca customer winner is uh, Kalina Rayner. Congratulations to Congrats. both of you. Yay. I'll be contacting you after this and you'll be receiving some merch points for our store. And again, I want to thank Zach so much for coming on the webinar today. I feel like I learned so much and I feel like I now need to like play around with a bunch of like image AI tools because I feel like it's so fun. Same. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's definitely like, you know, good and bad. It's fun because you can make some cool stuff, but you can also waste your day just going at it <laughs> that, that's what we're gonna do now you're gonna check out our socials and it's just gonna be a bunch of our <laughs> new ai pictures <laughs> yes but honestly thank you so much it was so great i learned so much as well um and it's always great when you can like walk away with something and be like okay this is something new i want to try out and just mm -hmm. continue to upskill totally yeah, for sure Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining, and we will see you next week. Next week, we're chatting all about Canva pro tips, so that's always one of my favorite ones. So get ready for that, and we will see you guys next week. Bye, Bye. everyone. Yeah.